Hello, everyone. Uh, Kurt, welcome to Web Summit. Thanks for uh, talking to me here. Um, so for everyone out there who may not know what Cyanogen is, can you give us a brief description of um, the history of the company and what you do? Sure. Um, so Cyanogen is a derivation of Android. We're on millions of devices around the world. Um, it started as a open source project. My co-founder, his hacker name was Cyanogen, so that's where the name comes from. Um, around him grew what is now the world's largest Android open source community, and these guys started making changes to the Android framework, etc. And many people around the world started flashing their devices, their Android devices with our version of an, uh, Android, um, to take advantage of all the new features that we added, etc. In some cases, when the OEM uh, sunsetted a device and it may not have had a current version of Android supported. Or we have guys that bring up you know, some of these older devices with more current versions of Android. Um, so we decided to start a company around this to effectively evolve Android uh, in a different direction than we think um, Google's going in, but also taking advantage of the existing Android ecosystem so we still have Google services and Google Play Store and all that good stuff. We're not, we're not a fork of Android like uh, Kindle, you know, like Amazon's Fire Phone, uh, etc. We're also completely compliant while all of the Google services. So you're essentially building on top of Android. Is that a fair description of what you do? Yeah. I listen. When you have, we 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 work on everything from the application layer down to the the framework of Android. So there's a lot that you can do when you have the whole, uh, when you have the entire operating system stack. So we're announcing some platforms next year that enable us to do deeper integrations with other services into the operating system. So in, in the last uh, year or so, you made quite a few bold claims about what Cyanogen could do in terms of disrupting Android and taking it away from Google and such. Um, but if you look at the smartphone industry today, you've got Android and you've got iOS, and they're absolutely completely dominant. Microsoft has poured billions of dollars into developing Windows Phone, and its market share is dwindling, and it's, uh, it's below 3% at the moment. What makes you think that Cyanogen can really disrupt the incumbents in the market at the moment? Uh, we believe that the operating system, um, Android and iOS, have fundamentally been commoditized. Uh, if you took an alien being from another world and you gave them an Android device or an iOS device, they would look at them and say they're identical. People interact with the applications and services. We think that there's an opportunity to do deeper integrations of these tier one, two, and three applications and services such that when you integrate them and you're able to capture signal and federate those signal to other applications and services, it makes them more intelligent. Um, therefore, it gives rise to machine intelligence. We think that only on an open computing platform, machine intelligence arises. We don't think it happens on closed platforms. If you look at iOS and Android today, um, the, the, the platform, the deeper integration, favors the incumbent OS creator services, you know, i.e. Siri integrated into iOS, but only powering Apple Music, not powering Spotify or other services. Uh, the same thing on the Google side. So, you know, really when we look at what we're doing, extended in time, we view ourselves more as a machine intelligence company than an operating system company with the realization that operating systems have been commoditized, A. B, mobile devices are being commoditized around the world, so we're seeing sub $75 Android devices that are as good as $300 Android devices, and in a few years you'll see $50 Android devices that are as good as a $600 iPhone. So you have Apple, which I don't think can pivot to face a commoditized smartphone world, and I think in five plus years you're going to see some effects there. You have the operating system commoditized, and you have the incumbents favoring their own services, which means from a signal gathering perspective, um, they're going to be somewhat challenged versus a platform that enables other services to be integrated. When you can capture all that signal, I think there's more intelligence that arises on top of that. So I think that there's a really big opportunity to create an open compute platform 
uh, built on Android simply because Android is at such scale. In the next few years, it'll be at three, four billion plus users. It'll be the biggest computing platform on Earth. So to be able to plug into that and have full observation capability across the operating system and to see what everybody does across services, across sensors, uh, creates an incredible opportunity. So I've got, I've got a phone that's running Cyanogen OS at the moment. It's Wiley Fox. It's a UK company, and they've launched. And it's a pretty small brand, and they're, they're trying to do something different. But what I'm using on this, how much, how much different is what you're talking about going to be than what I'm experiencing at the moment in terms of your um, integration of machi machine intelligence and kind of bringing all that together. Is, is it going to be a completely different experience than what I'm getting at the moment this on my it, smartphone? It takes time to get there, right? I mean, you can't, you can't, this stuff doesn't emerge overnight, mm -hmm. right? Um, you need to create developer platforms for the services to be integrated. You need to build graphs and intelligence teams to start to create, um, you know, to start to understand exactly what the users are doing, et cetera. Um, you know, on this device and other Cyanogen devices globally right now, we have done some integrations. You'll see more and more of these things coming up over the next few quarters. Um, as one example, though, just, just a very small example, we, one of the things we've done, when we look at things like dialer or camera, et cetera, we, we view these as platforms. So why shouldn't a communication service like a Skype not be integrated into the dialer or here, you know, there's, a, there's a, that spam number blocking thing, uh, Truecaller, yeah. you know, they've been backed by Sequoia. So instead of being an application, they're integrated into the dialer. Some interesting facts are when the APK is bundled on a Samsung Galaxy device, there's, the take rates for that, that application are less than 20%. When they're deeply integrated into the operating system, um, the take rates are greater than 70%. There's a lot of things we can do at the OS level to create contextual nudges um, for people to fire up that, that plug-in, if you will. And then once it's part of the the, the, some of the core OS framework, the engagement goes through the roof, right? So we like to think that people that have services that, are, that, 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 that can be integrated into the, the operating system, it creates higher engagement, um, higher take rates for the, the application developer, et cetera, and then ultimately in time more value for them and their users. Um, so you, you're generating quite a lot of buzz in Silicon Valley at the moment, and you've kind of you know, you've raised a lot of money there, and one of your key partners is um, Microsoft. Can you tell us a bit more about your partnership with them and how that may actually feed into what exactly we'll be seeing from Cyanogen in the coming next 12 months? Well, there's few companies in the world that, that are able to build large-scale graphs and intelligence, etc. cetera. Um, you have to access millions of people, you know, hundreds of millions of people. Microsoft has done that with Bing. Um, obviously, they have a lot of services that are directly comparable to some of the services that Apple may have and Google may have, et cetera. As a startup, it's impossible to replicate some of these things yourself, so we have to identify partners in the ecosystem that have some of these services that we can work with, and it just so happens that Microsoft has a, a great portfolio of services, along with other companies, right? I mean, we're doing many, many different deals to evolve our version of Android um, versus and native you, Google Android. You, you've kind of We've spoken before about how you've spoken about how Cortana is. You, you see it as a better version of Siri and Google Now, and it, it's much more powerful. And that you're working to integrate that into Cyanogen, is that correct? Well, we haven't announced anything with Cortana, but Cortana is better than Siri. Make no mistake. Um, uh, you know, and it's it's they're they're pretty much on par with Google Now. So, okay. if there was a service to integrate, that'd be a good one. Sure. Um, so you. Um, have spoken before that saying that in the next 12 months we're going to see some kind of iPhone and Galaxy Slayers running Cyanogen. Does that mean that you have to partner with OEMs to produce these devices and OEMs that are at a scale where you'll be able to compete at that level? There's, there's two segments we're focused on when it comes to devices. It's the sub $100 market. We think that the majority of global Android growth is going to come from that space. Obviously, that's in markets like India and other emerging markets. But we also think it's important because of uh, the nature of what we're doing, our open source community, the Android enthusiasts, to create you know, flagship galaxy killer level devices. And I think you'll see some really interesting things for us in 2016 when it comes to that. And so that'll be next year we'll see before in we In 16, you'll see some, yeah, you'll, you'll see a galaxy class killer from us. You'd speak about the enthusiast uh, market. That's obviously you've, you've got, I think it's 50 million users at the moment of Cyanogen. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of them, right? That? I mean, uh, 
there's a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, my point is that it, it, the, to become kind of, you know, to disrupt Android truly, are you not going to have to get to a, a much bigger scale? And to do that... Of course, yeah, listen, I mean, we're, we're not naive, right? I mean, again, there's, there's steps along the way to get there. I think that... Our users love Google services. Um, there's, there's a lot of value there, and we, we're, we're, we're not in denial of that, and we want to continue to provide the, all of these for these Cyanogen users. Um, but as you grow in user base, et cetera, you have more leverage to go off in your own direction and do other things. And how key is kind of marketing, branding, advertising going to be? And, you know, that how key is what? Advertising, branding, marketing, all that kind of stuff going to be, because obviously Apple and Samsung spend billions every year on that. Yeah, I mean, for a startup, that's why aligning with partners that, are, that have stakeholders, that, that are stakeholders in, in this game, right? I mean, it's just, mobile computing has really just begun. We're at a, you know, a little under two billion users globally right now. It's gonna go to four plus billion, so it's, it's, it's a big number. Other than Apple and Google, there are a lot of stakeholders that wish they could um, be more meaningful, right? So from that perspective, we look at being able to draft off marketing and branding with some of these partners as we launch some of these next generation services mm -hmm. in 2016 and beyond. And do you think that the Cyan Cyanogen brand is strong enough to kind of really stand out there, stand up against Apple, Google? On, the, on a global scale, considering that Microsoft Listen, I think that, tried I think that I think that brands and technologies are all about product, right? Um, I, I do think that the Cyanogen brand is more of an enthusiast brand. It's a, it's a mouthful for mass consumers. So there may be some things we will we, we'll, we'll be doing in 16 to address that, right? Okay. And nothing, you know, we, we don't have anything to say about that today, but there's, there's some, you know, we're, we're obviously aware of that. But at the end of the day, any successful technology brand is successful not because of branding and marketing, it's because they create incredible products that people use, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the end game here. Um, at the moment in, in Google, uh, I think Sundar Pichai has been kind of moved over and he's in charge of... I'm sorry? Sundar Pichai is in charge of Google at the moment right. and he's kind of the guy, he came up through Android and he's, you know, worked on Chrome and... Do you think that there's a lack of innovation at Google, that they've kind of stopped innovating on Android, and that's why companies like Sanogen have, have got given, been given an opportunity. I don't think it's about stopping innovating. I think that Google does incredible amounts of innovation, but it's all about focus, right? If you're a startup and you're purely focused in one th on one thing, I think that you can have a better shot at making a, making a difference than a big company that's focused on a hundred different things. And in fact, even though Android is very successful, there are you know, there are people within that group that may have been there since the early days with Andy Rubin that are now off working on other things, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that, it, that people in technology often in, you know, the Valley and elsewhere, they, they start to move on to things like, ooh, IoT, ooh, VR, blah, blah, blah. I mean, when, when none of these things are meaningful, significant platforms today, yeah. and all of the growth in computing is coming from, from smartphones. So you get a lot of the smart people that get bored of working on things they may have been working on for four or five years and they jump over to something else who, whose platform scale is like that versus smartphones and where they're actually going. So I, I think that innovation in, in mobile computing around the smartphone is, is, is still at its infancy and the growth is, 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 is extraordinary. This is where all of the growth is to be had. So I think that focusing on that you know, is, is, um, is a big opportunity. It's a big opportunity, but what's to stop Google turning around in a couple of years' time, or even in 12 months' time, when Cyanogen kind of reveals, you and know, what? The, when Cyanogen reveals exactly what you're going to be doing, of Google turning around and saying, okay, let's just do that, and putting some resources behind it, and turning Android, making Android better, and then can, can, could they just I, simply listen, I, it's, copy it's, you? It's challenging for a larger company um, like a Google to do partnerships, and when you talk about signal exchange, there are large companies that are very aware of the, 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 the signal that they have and how that can aid a competitor to become more potent and powerful. And at present, you know, I don't think Facebook is gonna do incredible signal exchange with, with Google. So we're, we're, we're sort of a smaller company, a neutral third party like Switzerland. I think that there's unique opportunity for us 
to do things that a larger incumbent cannot. And in terms of obviously, you know, you're, you've been, you're built on Android. Um, does Sanjin have any relationship with Google? Does we, I'm sorry, do what? Do you have any relationship with Google? No. Nothing, is, of, is nothing that, of substance. Is that down to your part, or that you haven't reached out to them, or they, they're just yeah, not interested you know, in talking? Uh, we've, we've had a couple of, I mean, listen, Google's obviously very aware of who we are, and, um, you know, whether, we love Google, but I'm not sure if they love us. You love Google, but you're, you want to be, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't expect Larry Page to pick up the phone and offer to uh, acquire you anytime and not anytime. add you to the alphabet. I, I highly doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. Okay. Um, <laughs> if, 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 finally, Kurt, if you, you're going to have to kind of convince the billions of people that are using smartphones out there, and most of them are using Android, a lot of them are using iOS, to, to change what they've been doing for the well, last Well, we're not asking years. them to change to do anything, right? Because Cyanogen is also Android as it exists. So okay, the existing but, ecosystem is available to us. But to so the opportunity Cyanogen. is, hey, if we are able to plug into the existing ecosystem and offer differentiation, right? In a world where Android is being commoditized and every OEM in the world is being commoditized, we give them differentiation. We create revenue models that can work for them. And that, that to us is interesting. And that's what enables the, the traction to grow on the distribution side. And the more consumers see the value in what we're creating, then we think that that can pick up. But that's that's that what I'm saying. And from a consumer up. point of view, how, how are you going to sell Cyanogen? Because talking about well, signals it's and like machine you, learning, you, you that's You bought not... this Wiley Fox phone, right? I mean, we're continuing to work with OEMs around the world um, to distribute Cyanogen as the default version of Android on those devices. And you'll see many more of those partnerships launch in 2016. And that's with, because Wiley Fox is obviously quite a small brand. Are, are we going to see you'll much see bigger You'll see many bigger brands next year, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.